Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know a long time, no, see. If you didn't watch yesterday's video, make sure you guys go check it out. Mama looking like this, I am one week postpartum and I just released yesterday the full on uh, vlog. It's a pretty much a breakdown of what happened because I was not due yet, but ended up having to get like a C-section done super quickly, pretty much a skin emergency. I introduced you to her in that video and I explained everything that happened, which honestly was so traumatizing. The news within itself and then to add the NICU experience, I don't know how people go through it for much longer than I did. But yeah, so all of that is in that video. I'm gonna link it up here. No, I'm gonna link it up here. And I'm gonna make sure that I link it in the description box so you guys can go check it out that way. You guys understand it fully because I'm not gonna sit here and explain it. I just wanna answer you guys' questions and I have them all written down. So I'm just gonna answer questions here. I did go on Instagram and ask, what you guys wanted to know but anyway let's move on because i have so many people who asked questions a lot of them were the same but i still have a, a like a shit ton of questions so let's dive on in how many weeks were you i was actually 36 and a half weeks pregnant when i was informed that my baby was actually measuring at 34 and a half weeks in terms of like her belly and so um it was advised that i have my cesarean pushed to like 24 hours from that appointment where they told me that. How different is it from having Ty? So Ty is my seven year old. Ty was 38 weeks, considered full term, um, and she was a normal size. With Camila, she was 36 and a half weeks, but she stopped growing at 34 and a half weeks. She doesn't even fit in newborn clothes. She needs additional care right now. She's on a high calorie diet for a baby in order for her to gain weight because instead of gaining weight after being born, she actually went below her birth weight and lost weight. She was in the NICU. So the experience between Ty and Kami is very different. Because Ty, I was able to bring home three days later after my cesarean with Camila. I had a cesarean and three days later I had to leave the hospital and she had to stay. So super different. They look alike. I have a photo. I'm going to put it here. I have photos that I did in comparison because I was like by myself at the hospital. Because <laughs> my husband had to be with Ty. So um, I was like, okay, this is Ty the moment she was born. This is Cammy the moment that she was born. This is Ty like day one. This is Cammy day one. This is, you know, day three, three. And they look the same, at least to me. They look the freaking same. So it's just um, crazy. The only difference really between both was the NICU experience, at least as of right now, that I'm noticing is the size of the baby and the NICU experience. Are you making sure you're taking at least 15 minutes for yourself? No. <laughs> Again, it's only been almost three days and given the fact that I had to leave the hospital, I didn't get to carry my child and nurture her in my hospital room. She was in the NICU. I had to ask for permission in order to carry her, see her, feed her when it was, you know, time to feed her because she wasn't being fed for the first two days. She was on IV and tubes everywhere. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm okay with giving my all just for a little bit so that I can embrace my little cam cam. The next question is kind of heartbreaking because I know what it's like to lose a child. How long did it take to get back up after a C-section? I lost my son, couldn't walk for four days. I lost my son too. My heart goes out to you. I want to hug you. I want to hug you so bad because I know what that's like. This time around, this is my second C-section. It took me almost a week i'm gonna say a full five days of needing help to get up from bed to to sit down in a bed to get on a, like like sit on a couch get up from a couch get in the car get out of the car to pee to pee which is extra i know but i needed help for the first maybe five days and that is without medication i didn't like stay in bed at all at all like 
C-section day one. They were like, we need you to start walking. And I said, okay, cool. And within a few hours, once I can feel my legs, I was walking back and forth to the NICU. You know, as I don't, I don't know. It, was, it became a superpower, you know, just know that you're going to go see your baby. And then I would be able to get up and go. Even at two, three o'clock in the morning, I would have, I would like pump my milk and go take it to her. So I was, I never had any actual downtime after the C-section. Hours later, I was up and walking is your older daughter's name ty short for something yes we call her ty sometimes we call her ty ty but her name is Taina, and it is just the name of our indigenous people it is the indigenous people of the dominican um culture as well as the puerto rican that was originally supposed to be my name so my name was supposed to be taina liz and when i met my husband and we decided to date and then we decided to get engaged and plan like a field trip he would have had kids i told him like i can care less what you want to name a boy but if we have a girl, her name is going to be Taina, and this is why. And he loved it. He totally loved it. How did we pick both daughters' names, meanings behind it? So, of course, I just touched on the whole Taina thing. With Camila, honestly, um, I didn't think I would have any more kids. I wasn't eager to find the name. My husband and Ty were very eager to find the name. And they came up with lists of names, and I would just cross them off, cross them off, cross them off. And it became a debate. You know, they were like team A and I was all by my little lonesome in team B. But I wanted names that weren't just heard of with every conversation. I wanted something that would be like, oh, okay. Like there's not that many people with that name. One day I got so, I was already pregnant and I think I was like maybe four, maybe four or five months. How I knew it was a girl and I was already so upset that they kept pushing the issue of we need to pick a name, we need to pick a name, we need to pick a name. And I said, I don't like any of the names you guys like, but if we can agree with the name Camila, then I'm good to go. And they were like, Camila. And I was like, yes, Camila Liz. And my husband goes with a K. And I said, with a K, it's fine. It could be with a C, it could be with a K. I just really like like the sound of it and it's so funny because they loved it and that's how we came up with her name so it's not you know there's no special reason behind it really other than i really really liked that name and it's easy to say in spanish for those of our family members that do not speak english um it's just it's just a great name overall so we chose that one I ended up taking a break, making sure that the baby was okay. Daddy is with her right now. He made sure like he's feeding her, he's doing his thing, which is awesome. He's burping her. So I figured it would be cool if I were to just come out here because whenever, like it is so humid, but whenever there's a little bit of a breeze, it will feel amazing. So let's move on. How are you doing? What are you doing for self care? And then another question that I got a lot was, how are you really doing? Um. I'm good. I'm tired. Every mama is tired, whether you have a newborn or whether you have a 14 year old, you're just always tired. You never, ever, ever, ever get to sleep the way that you used to prior to having children. So that's just a thing. I'm tired. Again, I'm running on three hours worth of sleep, but we're good. I mean, you know, I think given the fact that I've gone through what I've gone through with my pregnancies, the loss and then having Ty and her being sick all the time for the first almost five years, I feel like I can handle what I have going on right now. I'm, I'm pretty good. Again, I, you know, I need a little bit of makeup. I can definitely use a nap, but you know what? She's no longer in the NICU, she's with me, and that is what matters. Now that we've kind of figured out where we are with her and her routine, the peeing, the pooping, the sleeping, the eating, now it's a matter of adding that to our routine and making it work. I'm obsessed with my children and, you know, it, it brings me nothing but joy, so I'm good. I'm good, I promise you guys, I'm good and my face does not lie. Which is why I couldn't film when I tried to film to try to like get my mind off of things. I just couldn't because my my face doesn't lie. How did labor go? Honestly, it was a breeze, okay? I can care less if anyone says that getting a cesarean is the easy way out. You know what? Honestly, I've given birth by pushing and I've also had cesareans and 
by all means give me a cesarean okay so labor was not bad because technically i wasn't in full on labor i had a schedule the c-section i did have contractions cervical pains and all of that right before my cesarean like literally minutes before my cesarean so it was a breeze okay it was a breeze my husband just turned down the outside light <laughs> It's like, look, girl, it's getting dark up in there. Okay, cool. Next question. How is big sister smothering the new sister? I'm guessing. Yes, she is. I think, okay, she's very smart. You guys have seen her here on my channel. But she still thinks she's more of a doll kind of thing. And I have to, like, consistently remind her. She is not a baby alive. She is much smaller and she is a real human. We are responsible for her can't pick her up by yourself you can't this you can't that so i feel bad because i know that she feels restricted but again we're not dealing with just a newborn we're dealing with a newborn preemie and you know we orient her we talk to her we educate her but at the end of the day i mean she's seven and she is a child so how she wraps her head around it it's going to be different than the way we do um so it's just I know it's going to be redundant for her, but it's just consistency and reminding on an ongoing basis. She's not a toy. She's fragile. She's this. She's that. This question was huge. Did the COVID vaccine have anything to do with me having to deliver early and or going into labor early? No, not at all whatsoever. Trust me, I've asked every single medical like doctor that I've encountered because that's something that came to mind, at least to me. Every single medical professional told me absolutely not this happens all the time and the only reason why i believe that and you guys know i'm not a covid shot advocate the only reason why i believe them is because in one of my anatomy scans i was informed that towards the end of my pregnancy i would do weekly appointments so that they can make sure that everything is working properly and as an example i was told that the sometimes the placenta tends to slow down or stop working and if the baby is not receiving the nutrition that they need they would advise for a cesarean or you know to trigger labor that way the baby can come out and we can monitor the feedings the milk the x y and z so that she can receive proper growth and i was like okay cool now mind you this was in my second trimester so the fact that this all happened to me is more of a sign rather than bad luck they did orient me on this but again it doesn't happen to everyone so the fact that it happened to me they're saying that this is what it was and it has nothing to do with the vaccine i'm gonna believe it because i was oriented on this before i even got the vaccine how is daddy doing just like me except he has no pain <laughs> we're just learning to navigate this all over again after seven years um it is very hard to go through the whole not sleeping situation all over again it is not easy but it's manageable being pregnant and debating whether or not to take the covid shot look honestly I, it's it's totally up to you it is your decision i'm not going to tell you it is beneficial it is not till this day i did get covid shot number one i got the moderna and i'm still kind of like mm, about it you know what i mean i am going to get the two because i already got the one it's something that you have to talk to your medical provider they know everything that has to do with you your labs your medical history and all of that all i know is that i went with my gut and even after i got it like i i got the shot i was kind of freaking out i was so nervous someone said the last time that i filmed and put up a video i was very out of breath i did also go on instagram and i was saying how like oh like i'm just oh. yes i filmed on wednesday went to the doctor thursday was told to go to the hospital thursday night and delivered on friday um it's crazy how your body like kind of tells you things are happening without you really knowing that it's happening so it's a process it's a thing but yes the last two to three weeks I was already feeling different. I was feeling off, not feeling like I was gonna go into labor, but my body was already done with the pregnancy. It was exhausted. This one seemed to be one that was very concerning for a lot of people, so I left it for last. It says, how different is it with a newborn and having a six-year-old? Apparently this person has a six-year-old at home and they're expecting at the moment. I want to say that that's really what that's about. My tie is seven, so we're not that like the situation is not very different it's different for sure because ty at least for my situation that's how i can speak ty is so independent like she wants a snack she wants juice 
um, she needs water, she needs to go to the bathroom, she gets herself in the shower, she gets herself dressed, she cleans her room, she's helpful around the house. So it's a freaking breeze, okay? I mean, Ty was very independent, like around five. So I've been living a life of not having to stress, extending myself, you know, too much for my child because she's always been very very independent and so now i'm literally like okay i'm gonna wake up and i'm gonna make coffee i'm gonna make breakfast i'm gonna clean up around the house i'm gonna do some laundry mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna get in the shower i'm gonna fix myself up and i'm gonna film like four videos and then i'll probably edit one today one in the morning i am so enthusiastic about my day and then i realized i didn't do half of the shit i thought i was gonna do like being honest like this morning, I thought I was gonna conquer the world, and that didn't happen. I was gonna conquer the world in three hours of sleep. Yeah, okay, that didn't happen. So um, it's different because again, you're adding just someone else to take care of, and you just have to kind of like restructure your routine, and then you're back at like the sleepless nights and learning this personality, this individual, their routine it's freaking hard and i'm only a few days in but just always keep in mind it's very temporary you know the sleepless nights are temporary the learning this new individual and their routine is temporary once you get used to it it'll be okay at least that's what i'm hoping for look i don't have all the answers so that that's what i'm hoping for <laughs> i don't have the answers i i, I don't know all I know is that we're learning as we go. I can't tell you exactly what it's like because we're still navigating it and every family and every child is going to be different. Okay, I'm glad I didn't bring dinner. I did go check it. Dinner is great, but I know my family is like starving at this point. And as you guys can see, I started filming during the daylight and now it is dark as hell outside i hope i've answered every single one of your questions if you have any more let me know down below um <laughs> they're poking their heads out which means that cami probably needs a diaper change and we're getting ready to give her a quick bath so that is my exit with you guys today i hope you guys have enjoyed these videos unboxings are coming soon we're gonna navigate these waters there's something in my pool. I hear it, it's weird. We're gonna navigate these waters together. We will see if you hear a baby crying in the background of these unboxings. Um, you'll know Cammie is in the room and she's awake and throwing a fit. But for now, I hope you guys have enjoyed these videos and I'll see you guys later.